I think what I wanted to start with is just to find out where you were from. Where was I from? Where you were born. I was born in Forsyth County. Uh-huh. Up here at Tobaccoville. Tobaccoville? Yeah. Uh-huh. What, what was that? That is a little village. You, you've heard tell of Bethania, haven't you? Uh-huh. It's a, between Bethania and King. Uh-huh. The little station up there on the railroad. Right. Uh -huh. Why did they call it Tobaccoville? Well, there used to be a tobacco factory up there. Uh-huh. Close to the tobacco. I imagine the reason they called it tobacco. Uh-huh. And they raised a lot of tobacco up there, too. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. What did your parents do? They were farmers. Uh -huh. I was born and raised on a farm. What kinds of things would you do as, as a child working? As a working, uh -huh. I worked out in tobacco and uh -huh. corn, uh -huh. vegetable garden. And uh -huh. But I left home when I was 15 years old. When you were 15, and where did you come? I come to Winston-Salem, got a job at electric service company. Electric service? Why did you leave home? Well, my daddy always said if you got a whoop in the school, you'd get one got home. Mm -hmm. And I got in a fight with some boys at school, uh -huh. and the teachers took, sent me word that night that when I come back to school the next day, he's going to give me a whooping. Uh -huh. <laughs> so that's the reason I dropped out. Uh -huh. So you took, and you took off? Did you had, what did your parents think about you leaving? They didn't much like it, but mm -hmm. I wasn't going to take a whooping. So I came to town and got a job at electric service company at 10 cents an hour. Oh my goodness. What were you doing for them? I was learning electric trade. Uh -huh. I started out as a helper. Uh -huh. And uh, I worked for 13 months for 10 cents an hour. They didn't pay you much for learning, didn't they? Yeah. Back then, it wasn't high wages in no way. Regular electricians was only getting about 40 or 50 cents an hour. Well, why did you choose Winston um, as a place to come to? Well, that's the only place I knew of. <laughs> that was the biggest city nearby? That's, that's the only city that I knew of. Oh, I see. How many grades did you go through in school? How many what? How many grades did you go through in school? I, I imagine about this, maybe the seventh, eighth grade. Seventh grade. Uh -huh. How many years? How I many learned more after I left school than I ever did in school. I don't know. How many months would the school run out of the year? I reckon about six months, six months. as well as I remember back then. Uh -huh. so it's, you, it's just a one-room school house. Uh -huh. How, so it was real small, I guess. Mm -hmm. did, uh, did they arrange the school year sort of around the crops? Mm-hmm, yeah. Uh -huh. Did your parents sell their tobacco yeah. on the market? Mm -hmm. Where would they sell it? To went at Winston. Uh huh. Would you ride down with them? Yeah, I remember coming to town in the wagon. Uh huh. And going to the market, yeah. the auction. Yeah. That's how you knew about Winston. Yeah. yeah. Well, when you got to, how long? Did, what year were you born in? What year? Uh huh. Nineteen hundred. Nineteen hundred. So you, this is 1980. You know how old yeah, I am. Yeah, I know. It's easy to figure out. So you were, I guess, you came to Winston about 1915. Then, if you came when you were about 15 years mm -hmm. old, it was about 1950. Yeah, that's right. 1950. So how long did you um, work for the electric company? Well, I worked for the electric company for, I reckon, close to. I left there, I reckon, about 1922 or 3, somewhere like that, and went to work for Kleiner's Electric Company. Mm -hmm. I was an electrician then. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why, why did you make that switch? Change. Time? More money. More money. Good reason. More money. Mm -hmm. What kind of, um, what was your job like? Well, I, I was what they call a construction on the end of the construction, uh -huh. on the new buildings. We'd uh -huh. go in and wire houses or 
office buildings or a building like this or anything. That was under construction. Mm -hmm. Did you happen to have worked on this house when it was no, not, not when it was originally built. Uh -huh. I'd done all the work when the, this addition was added in 1935 and 36. Oh, right. But I went to work for Renola in 1927. 1927. Mm -hmm. How come you switched from that sacred electric company over to Renola? Well, for the same reason, more <laughs> money. <laughs> I, uh, at that time, Renola was doing commercial work electric work, plumbing, steam fitting, landscaping, uh -huh. and I wired the gray job up here. You wired the gray house? Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. Yeah. So you, you were working on other houses? Farther north. But you were working on other houses, mm -hmm. too? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I see. So what, who were, where were some of the other places besides the gray house that you were that Well, you uh... I went to work at 1927 down here. Uh -huh. I was on a couple of jobs before we went to Grayland. And after we left Grayland's, uh, I came back down here and done some odds and ends till Dick started devotion. You ever heard tell of devotion? No. Well, that's uh, up at close to Rowan Gap. Uh -huh. Dick started a, he bought, I think, I forget how many thousand acres up there. Uh -huh. And he started this house with a rock dam, damming up the little stream. Uh -huh. And he built a house against, uh, next to that dam. Uh -huh. I went up there, to, he said it'd be about three weeks' work. And I stayed up there a little over two years and had, wasn't even started good when I left. I left there in 1935 and come here regularly. Uh-huh. So you came back here. Mm -hmm. Well, what was he building the house for? For himself. For himself? Mm -hmm. You should go up there if you never, uh -huh. you never heard tell the no. devotion. Could you describe it for me? That's where Mrs. Rose was buried. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Can you describe the house for me? Oh, it's a huge house uh -huh. built out of stone and chestnut uh -huh. and walnut it's, it's a beautiful place the big lake you had a fish hatchery up there uh -huh. and they had several built several houses for employees like they did here uh -huh. and then later on after i left there they built another dam a big huge dam over on another creek uh -huh. and uh Mrs. Reynolds was buried up there, and Smith was buried, not Smith, but Zach mm -hmm. was buried up there. Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness. I'm I surprised know. you hadn't heard nothing no. about that. Well, I knew that they, Mrs. Reynolds used to go up to Roaring Gap a lot for, like, vacations. Yeah, get out of yeah. The now, uh, I wired a house for for Ms. Bernard up there. That's Ms. Gray before she married Bernard. Uh -huh. And I wired Mr. Babcock's house. You know, he built a house up there. Uh -huh. I wired that. And I wired, done some wiring for Ed Laster's house up there. I done a lot of work around Ron Gap uh -huh. for Renola. The whole time you were Bef getting... That was before I came here regularly. Uh-huh. The man that was here, that I worked under, they let him go. Uh -huh. And I moved here on the place and been here ever since. Uh -huh. Why did they let him go? Well, I'd rather not talk about okay. that. Okay, okay. But, but they, you worked underneath him? Yeah, I worked under him until 1935. Uh -huh. oh. Well, during when you first started working in 1926, was, um, um, you got your salary paid by Renolda yeah. House? Yeah. Yeah. Not, not Renolda House now. Not Renolda House. Renolda Incorporated had a, was a big business here, you see. Oh, I see. It was a big farm. It had a dairy. Uh-huh. 
and as I said, it had done commercial work for all those people out here in Buena Vista. Right. The electric work and the plumbing and the heating and the landscaping and all that. That was right. Renola Incorporated. Right. But when Renola Incorporated closed up, oh, I don't know when that was. Anyway, Mr. and Ms. Babcock kept me on mm-hmm. to look after the house up here and the village. <coughs> but when I first came here, we had everything on this side of the road, everything on the other side of the road. Mm-hmm. That was all the north. Mm-hmm. And uh, they owned half of Winston-Salem, yeah. all the stores downtown and uh, they'd lease them out or rent them out some of them with the understanding that they could keep it up some of them runs reality company would keep them up uh-huh. well um oh who was um, the manager of, of all of, of it. All of it when you first came. Mr. Warrington, Steve Warrington. Uh huh. What was he like as a person? Well, he and I got along just fine. Uh huh. There's a lot of them didn't like him. Uh huh. But I liked him because I tell you, he was a man that when he you went to him for something, he'd tell you yes or no, uh-huh. and you could depend on it. He wasn't no wishy-washy. Uh-huh. You know, a lot of people tell you yes today and tell you no tomorrow. Uh-huh. But he wasn't a man like that. I, I call him, always found him to be just a straight-shooting man. Mm-hmm. When he told me something, I could depend on it. Okay. So was he your direct boss? Ma'am? Was he the one that was directly over you, who you got your mm-hmm. orders from? No. No. He, uh, well, yes, in a way, but when when I was working for them before I moved here, uh-huh. I, I'd take my orders from the head electrician. Right. But, of course, he was the head of, Mr. Warrington was the superintendent of the whole thing. Right. But he, he had a lot over him, you know, under him, you know, the uh-huh. farming and the, the everything. So, At that time, Baltimore Trust Company was a, what you'd say, administrator of the state, of Mr. and Mrs. Ronald's estate, uh-huh. Baltimore Trust Company. They sent him here. Mm-hmm. So were any of the Reynolds living here, any of the children living here when you came? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, they weren't, they were just in and out. Uh-huh. You couldn't say that they was living here hardly, but they, they, they was in and out. Uh-huh. Who, which ones would come? Which one of the... Well, Dick lived here a while. Uh-huh. And uh, Smith, I think, was here, but I, I didn't see Smith over two or three times. Uh-huh. Were any of the girls ever here? Um, Nancy or Mary? Uh, they didn't... They didn't live here. Mm-hmm. They would come maybe and have a party or something uh-huh. like that. Uh-huh. Did you ever get to talk much with um Not not until I moved here in nineteen thirty five. Not till you moved. Yeah. Then I got a chance to be close to Mr and Mrs. Belko. Uh-huh. In other words I I'd taken my orders from them then. Right. If they wanted anything, they'd send me word they wanted to see me or something. And if I wanted to see them about something, well, I'd come up and make a point. Mm-hmm. So what were your duties under the Babcocks? What kind of things? To keep up the electric work. Uh-huh. That was my responsibility. Uh-huh. And it... 
unless it was a big major thing I was a judge they didn't want to be bothered with it every time the light bulb burned out whether they put in a new one or not they didn't they didn't want to be bothered uh -huh. well, you but, have but they've never refused to see me anytime I wanted to uh -huh. on business did, uh, were you able to, like, if you needed some equipment, just to go out and buy it? If it didn't, oh, if it mounted several thousand dollars, I'd take it up to them. Uh-huh. But otherwise, if it was something you just needed, That's right. you'd go out and buy it. When they remodeled this house and built this guest house, swimming pool, mm -hmm. and remodeled the basement mm -hmm. in 1935, uh, they had an architect from New York, and I had uh, I had five to six electricians and helpers on this job. We pulled every foot of the wire out of the, this house and pulled in new wire, uh -huh. wired all that down there. Uh -huh. And uh, oh, I don't know. I expected two hundred thousand dollars worth of electric work done here because. At that time, everything was on the ground. There wasn't a foot of electric wire overhead. There wasn't a foot of telephone wire overhead. Duke Power Company quit when they left Renola Road down here. Mm -hmm. Coming in under the tunnel, and the tunnel, there's a tunnel all the way up from the old steam plant. Well, all the stuff, electric stuff, and telephone and all was in that tunnel telephone company wouldn't come any further than the, out on the road. It was my responsibility to keep up everything working. Past the road. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Gosh. And they never opened one mouth one time about money that I spent about. And I, I bought the best equipment I could get, and it's held up good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's it. Since the only trouble we're having now, since it was turned over to the public, mm -hmm. they've added a lot of lights. I know, I don't know whether you know some or not, but these hallways down here, those streamers, mm -hmm. they've added a lot of those. And uh, it's overloaded some of the circuits, but we got those straightened out. Uh -huh. But that's the only trouble that's ever given. Well, I'm, I'm really interested that they they really could, they could afford to hire an electrician and pay you more than a, a regular electric company would. Well, I, I could have made more on construction work. Uh -huh. But they've been mighty nice to me. Uh -huh. And take everything in consideration, I guess I'm about as lucky as I could have been. Uh -huh. Are you talking about the Babcock? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. They're really nice people to work for. Uh -huh. As long as you do your work, that's all that is required. Uh -huh. I didn't. Okay. When, do you, did, when, what year was it that you moved out here? What year I moved on the place? Right. 1935. So that was the same year that you started working full time for that's the right. Time? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where did you live before that? I lived at Tobaccoville. Tobaccoville. So you still uh, do you community? Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Where did you live when you when you were fifteen and came into Winston? Where I, did you stay? I, I lived in the boarding house. Uh huh. I I paid three dollars a week for room, board, and wash. Three dollars a week, huh? Mm -hmm. you can't get that anymore. <laughs> what other kind of people were there at the boarding house? What other kinds of people were there at the boarding house? Oh, just a bunch of boys. Uh huh. About my age. Uh -huh. A lot of them worked at Runners the Company. Oh, uh, really? There was, must have been 15 or 20 of them because it was a huge boarding house. Uh huh. And there's four of us in the bedroom that I was in. And that's the way they doubled up, you know. Uh 
But the, the rest of the boys, they was scattered out. Some worked for Haynes, some worked for Ronald's, some worked for, some of them was clerks and stores. How come you to start working for the electric company rather than Reynolds Tobacco or one of the cotton plants? Well, I had a brother that was running on streetcars here at that time. Uh-huh. He had left before you? Oh, yeah. And uh, he knew the man that owned the electric service company because uh-huh. he rode his streetcar nearly every morning. He lived up in North Liberty. And he rode his streetcar. And when I came to town, he asked him about a job for me. Mm-hmm. I was staying at his house then. Uh-huh. And he said, told him to tell me to come see him the next day. So I went to see him, and he put me to work. And when he did, then when I moved over, the boarding house was on uh, Northwest Boulevard, uh-huh. right up in town, you see. And that, I thought that was just wonderful. I mean, this old country boy going, <laughs> living right up in town. <laughs> so how would you get to work? Would you walk, or was it close enough to walk? Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. Well, that's neat. How did you find out about uh, the job over at Ronalda when you were at the second? Well, the head electrician at Renola at that time. Mm-hmm. It didn't have supply houses like they got now, mm-hmm. back then. <coughs> electric service company was the biggest con- electric contract in town. Mm-hmm. Well, they carried most anything you wanted in the electric line at that time, because it didn't have electric stuff like they got now. Mm-hmm. And he did most of his trading there. He'd buy his wire and his fixtures and everything at electric service company. Mm-hmm. And for some reason, he got to liking me uh, mm-hmm. something. I don't know why. That's why I got tied in with Renola. Mm-hmm. And when they fired him, I, mean, I shouldn't have said that. Well, we, we, we can, you know... Take off anything you don't want. But when he left here, he recommended them that they give me the job. Uh-huh. And that's why I got the job. That, that was nice of him. Yeah, well, he, he always treated me for fun. He, he'd give me his shirt off his back. Really? Did, did, he, did you learn a lot under him? Did he teach you? No, I was pretty good at my trade when, when you started. Yeah. Not bragging now. Right? <laughs> of course, I learned a lot out here. Uh-huh. I never had no experience with telephones before, uh-huh. and I did learn a lot about. But see, we had it. We got our automatic board downstairs. Uh-huh. We had telephones in each one of the rooms. We had telephones in all the villages, all operating off that one board. Uh-huh. I learned a lot there, but I had to learn it. By experience. By doing it. Yes. Yeah. So how? What? So was it just you two that were working? The head electrician and you that were. Yeah. After we left the grade job, mm-hmm. after we finished the grade job, the uh, depression began to come on. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, I didn't work full time. He was just give me you know, work around and when he's on a vacation and stuff like that. Until Dick started that job up at Devotion. Mm-hmm. How what around what year was that that he started that? I reckon about nineteen thirty two. About nineteen thirty two I think. Uh-huh. But Lord that was a wild wilderness then. Uh huh. Well, you should go up there and look at that place. I like that. So, um, when he started it, you went up there to mm. live? No, no. Uh, when I started up there, the plumber and the steam fitter from here, all three, all three trades, mm-hmm. 
from here and the landscape mm -hmm. and uh, we would ride together we'd go up on Monday morning and come back Friday afternoon mm -hmm. because all of us lived here mm -hmm. uh, the did, did, yeah mm -hmm. we was boarding up there So, when, let's see, when did you get married? 1920. 1920? You know how old I was then, don't you? 20 years old. <laughs> yeah. Did, were you still in the boarding house up to this time? Up until I got married. Uh-huh. And then I got an apartment. Uh-huh. Did you rent that? Well, we lived there a little over a year. And I moved back to Batterville. Oh. Uh -huh. So you rented an apartment for a year, you and your wife? Mm hmm And then why did, how come you to move back? Well, I just liked it up there. I had a little farm. Uh-huh. And uh, I, depression was coming along, too. I wasn't working regularly. Mm hmm And I just moved, moved back up there. And stayed up there until 1935, mm -hmm. when I came to work here regularly. Mm -hmm. So was this a family farm, did you, or did you buy this? No, I bought it. Uh huh. I bought it before the depression. Uh huh. Before was this during while you were married though, mm -hmm. and you were able to save up money. Mm -hmm. You were able to save up money while you were... I was able to save part of it, but I lost the place. You lost the place? Yeah. Because you couldn't make the payments? Yeah, that's on. right. Oh. So what did you do after, I guess they foreclosed? Yeah, that's right. What What did you and your wife do after that? We rented another house rented an, was this and lived there until I moved here. That was in Tobaccoville, too? Mm-hmm. Gosh, that was, must have been terrible to lose your... <laughs> it was, oh, back then, everybody was losing everything they had. Uh-huh. Yeah. It was real sad. So, how come you to, um, to finally, um... How come what? How come you to finally move back here to, um, to live on the place? To Renola? Live? Yeah. Well, How did that happen? They, they furnished me a house, uh -huh. furnished me heat, furnished me everything except my light bill. Uh -huh. I had to pay my light bill, uh -huh. but they furnished me everything else. So that was a real advantage. Well, yeah, of course, my salary wasn't, like I said a while ago, I could have made more money on my salary by staying on construction mm -hmm. than I did make by moving here. Mm -hmm. But count my house and everything that's furnished, mm -hmm. that's to be considered too, you know. Right. right. So that you didn't have to pay any rent. You didn't have to pay anything except my light bill. Oh my goodness. You okay. see, everything was heated in the wintertime from the steam plant down there. You know where the steam plant is? Yeah. That's next to my house there. Mm -hmm. That used to be the steam plant. Mm -hmm. Furnished the heat for everything on the other side of the road and this side too, mm -hmm. including this house. Mm. So that, I guess that was a real advantage to yeah. living here. Was this the same with other people that lived on the place? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Who else lived here at that time? Well, uh, the superintendent of the landscaping, superintendent of the plumbing and heating, and uh, and me. Mm -hmm. Now the colored people all live down on Five Road. You oh. heard tell of Five Road. Yeah, and a little bit. What was that like out there? Well, that's that was all the colored people. Uh huh. It was down here where Silas Creek Parkway is now. Yeah, near where mm -hmm. the Western Electric mm -hmm. Plant is. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. They had a church, little church down there in the school, uh -huh. and uh, all the colored, well, not all of them, but most of them lived down there. Mm -hmm. So did, uh, did you ever have any children? 
I didn't have but six. You didn't have but six. <laughs> I Did got I got six children, uh -huh. fifteen grandchildren, and three great grandchildren. Oh my goodness! Well, what did your six children? Um, hmm? What did your six did your six children go to school? Yeah. Uh huh. It, it, they finished all of them finished high school. Uh huh. But did none of them go to college. So I guess Ronalda School was was Ronalda School running then? Not when I moved here. Mm -hmm. It it had been running, but my children went to Old Town and Ronalds High, high School. school. Mm -hmm. so they went to the public schools. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Did they? Did you encourage them to go through college? Well, high school and yeah. Uh, they all finished high school, but they, they wasn't interested in going to college. Uh -huh. And in fact, I wasn't able to send them to college unless they could get something, and you know, a scholarship, yeah, something like that. Because uh -huh. uh -huh. I couldn't afford to send them. Right, not six of them. <laughs> what kind of work did they do today? Well, I got put. Two boys and four girls. The girls, uh, is not but one of the girls working. One of them works for a doctor. The, uh, but then one of them was a bank teller, and the other two never had work since got married. Uh -huh. And the one that was, was a bank teller got uh, bone cancer. And she's pretty bad shape. Mm -hmm. The two boys, one of one of them works for Piedmont Airlines, mm -hmm. and the other one works for Otis Elevator Company. Mm -hmm. So none of them ever went into um, factory work. Uh huh. None of them ever went into factory work. No. Of any kind. No. Uh huh. No. Uh -huh. Did your wife work? Ever worked? My first wife never did work after we was married. Uh huh. She never worked after we was married. Uh -huh. I lost her in 1953, mm -hmm. and I married again. Mm -hmm. And my last wife worked up until two years ago. Uh huh. She retired from uh -huh. Haynes, and then she she quit Haynes. She'd been there 39 years. She quit Haynes and stayed home two weeks and went to work for Wake Forest over here and worked Wake Forest seven years. <laughs> so what did she do at Haynes all those years? She was in the, I think she was in the, no I'm not sure what department she was in the Haynes. Uh -huh. But at Wake Forest she was in the Treasury Department. Treasury. Does she have children? No. Well, going back to your um, first wife, how did you meet her? Well, it was sort of roundabout way. <laughs> uh, there was a preacher staying with the boarding house I was telling you about. Uh -huh. And uh, he and I got to be pretty good buddies. Mm -hmm. And I had an aunt that lived up on Liberty Street and her husband died. Uh -huh. And uh, he had a 1914 model Ford uh -huh. and she couldn't drive it. And she was, wanted me to take her for a ride on, on weekends on Sunday, you know. And I'd go up there and get her and her. And that preacher would go along with me, and he was a courting my wife. <laughs> so to make a long story short, I just cut him out. <laughs> oh, gosh. How long did y'all court or date before you? Oh, about, about a year and a half. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Was she living at home? Was she working anywhere at that time? Yes, yeah, she was working at the Haynes Rubber Plant. Uh huh. Uh -huh. At that time, Haynes was running the rubber plant up there right. on Patterson Avenue, uh -huh. and she's working in that rubber plant. But she quit after y'all yeah. got married. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Well, see. Okay, I've got plenty of tape left. I just didn't want to write now. That'll be some tape, boy. <laughs> oh, I think this is good. Well, did um, did your duties ever change here, according to you know, like who was? Did I want? Did your your job duties, the things that you did on your job, did that ever change when you'd have different people come in, like different managers, like you started out under the one fella? Um, Mr. Warnigan? Yeah. No, it never did change much. Mm -hmm. Never did change much. Mm -hmm. Pretty much did the same thing. Uh, you? Mr. Sapp took over after Mr. Warnigan left, mm -hmm. and I had a little trouble with him. He was a, well, I don't know what you call him, but anyway, he tried to make some rules and regulations. I couldn't work under him. Mm -hmm. And I was fixing to quit. Mm -hmm. And uh, I called for make appointment with Mr. Babcock one morning. And he was sitting out here on this porch eating his breakfast. Mm -hmm. And I told him that I couldn't work on the conditions that he wanted me to. Mm -hmm. In other words, he wanted me. At that time now, let's go back a little bit. Okay. At that time, the plumber had died. Mm -hmm. And it was ex put that on me because we'd got rid of everything across the road right. and the only thing I had at that time we got rid of everything I had in town only thing I had was just on this side of the Renola Road mm -hmm. so when the plumber died well I took taken over that repair work I didn't do any construction but I did take over the repair work of the plumber what I could do, what I couldn't do, then I had to have a plumber. Mm -hmm. Well, Mr. Sapp had come out with a ruling that if something happened during the, in other words, everything, at, all the orders I got had to come through his office. Mm -hmm. In other words, if you was living down here and a thunderstorm come up and lightning knocked out your lights, sir, the water went off. We had our own water system. Water went off. Mm -hmm. I wasn't to fix that till maybe Monday morning when the order come through his office. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't work like that. Mm -hmm. And I told Mr. Babcock and explained it to him how it was. Mm -hmm. And I told him, I said, I can't work like that. I said, if something happens and I'm here, it's my duty to fix that. He said, what? Well, you pay no attention to the sap. He said, you working for me and Mary, and he said, you, your work is satisfaction, and he said, pay no attention to him at all. Mm -hmm. He said, he hadn't got anything to do with you, and that's the only run-in I ever had with any of them. Mm -hmm. Did Mr. Sap and Mr. Backtalk get along? Not too well. Not too well. Not too well, I don't think. So was Mr. Could could have did was Miss what was Mr. Sapp's position exactly? Was he under Mr. Babcock or was he sort of separate? Mr. Mr. Sapp was the same job that Mr. Warnkin had. Right. He was working for Ronaldo Corporation. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the Babcocks just own Ronaldo House. At that time, Babcocks owned 
where the old town club is, mm -hmm. where Wake Forest is, mm -hmm. Polo, where the Speed School is, mm -hmm. and Renola House. Of course, long about that same time, they cut out the farming, cut out the dairy, and finally cut out everything except the Renola House up here. Why did they cut all those things out? Well, it wasn't, it wasn't nothing but dead expense. Was it making money? Uh -huh. Never had made no money. Uh -huh. It wasn't built to make money. Uh -huh. why, did, why was it built? Spend money <laughs> for a show place. Uh -huh. Mr. and Mrs. Ronalds, R.J. Now I'm speaking of. Mm -hmm. They built it for a show place. They didn't build it to make money. Mm -hmm. <coughs> no way for it to make money. Mm -hmm. Why? Why do you think that they build it? Hmm? Why do? You, why do you think that they build it? Build it. Well, they just had the money. And just like Grayland's up here. Was it, um, do you think, was, was it built to be functional in any way at all? Or was it just built? No, I think it's just for, for a show place. Uh-huh, Because uh -huh. they had a bunch of show cattle down here. Uh-huh. They kept them on the road about nine months out of a year. <laughs> Did they? Besides the dead cattle, uh -huh. they had to get dead cattle down there that I was told that she paid $5,000 a piece for her. Well, back then, that was a lot of money, you know. Really? You're and uh, they just ruined them. Uh -huh. They had to do away with them. Uh -huh. At one time, they furnished all the milk for Ronald's Tobacco Companies and uh, Buena yeah. Vista. This, these cattle that that Mr. and Mrs. Reynolds owned. Mm-hmm. And they they gave uh, milk to the people that worked at R.J. Reynolds Tobacco Company. R.J. Reynolds Tobacco Company at that time had lunch rooms around uh -huh. through the factory. I think uh -huh. they do yet. I'm not sure. Uh -huh. And they furnished those cafeteers mm -hmm. milk. Would people have to pay for it? Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. Oh. So, so you never, you never did get to, to meet Catherine Reynolds. She was gone by the time you came. Mrs. <coughs> R.J. Reynolds. No, I never did see her. Uh-huh. I'm trying to think. I guess she did die just shortly before you came. When you let me go ahead and turn over the tape, okay, mm. and then I'll ask you some some more because it's getting ready to run out.
So I guess we were talking about the farm. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it was really never much of a money-making proposition. No, I don't think so. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I don't. It, I don't think it ever made any money. Uh huh. The, the whole time. When we done, when we was doing that commercial work, uh -huh. we made some money then. But after that closed down, because most what we did was on the percentage work, you know. Uh huh. Well, I I don't understand that the um, commercial work exactly. What all did that include? That in what I mean by commercial work. Uh huh was when we went on the outside and did work. Oh, I see. Because uh -huh. it was all done on a percentage. Uh -huh. You didn't have to figure on nothing, give them a contract or anything. You just do it plus 10% maybe or something uh -huh. like that. Uh -huh. So this would be the um, electricians and who else would go out? And Plumber and the landscape. Would the farm itself, the people doing the um, raising of the crops and the dairy and the poultry, was that making any money at all? I don't think so. Uh huh. Would they sell their products to to the outside to the public? I don't know of them ever selling anything except the milk. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Now I've seen them. From down here in the garden, you've been, you know where the vegetable garden, the rose garden, mm -hmm. where the rose garden is now. They used to, all that used to be vegetables. Mm -hmm. Well, I've seen them haul cucumbers and squash, truck loads off of that, and throw it down here in the trash. Really? Mm -hmm. They didn't have any place to sell it, or just didn't try to sell it. They didn't. Now, now I don't know yeah, whether they tried or not. So who would have been in charge of that policy? That would have been the first man? The landscape man. The landscape man? Hmm. Is, what was his name? Mr. Connors. Mr. Connors. Is he still around? Or no, he died about oh, a year, a year and a half ago. Oh, really? That would have been interesting to find out why they didn't try to sell those crops, just like truck crops try to sell them at the market. I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. They raised, used to raise hogs here. And they'd have a smokehouse full of hams and shoulders and middling down here and sausage. Mm -hmm. And they'd cut a ham this uh, hard and tough you couldn't eat it. Huh. So it really was sort of all for show. It was just okay. a show place. Mm -hmm. It was just a show place. You take those dead cattle. They used to have a pasture over there where Western Electric is now, and I've seen them come up that road there beside of my house mm -hmm. in the evenings, bring them up to milk. Mm -hmm. It looked like they couldn't hardly walk, hmm. and they wouldn't give a quart of milk. Because I don't know if you know anything about farming or about a cow. But they use milking machines on them, right. and when you use a milking machine, you got to what they call strip them. Mm -hmm. After you use a milking machine, you got to strip them. If you don't do that, they'll go dry, the cow and that's milk. yeah, and that's what happened to the dairy. So they had to, they had to sell those cows for beef. Really? Yeah. Do you think that? Um, it was ran better when Mrs. Reynolds was here? No, I don't think so. Because uh -huh. they didn't get nothing about expense. Uh -huh. Just so they had nice horses, uh -huh. good cows, uh -huh. good, name, good automobiles, uh -huh. and if they money would buy. Uh -huh. uh, they didn't have to look at the expense of it. Right, right. Well, did... Mm, did 
did you ever um, hear any stories about um, her and the farm? About what? About Mrs. Reynolds running the farm. Did she did she actually run the farm or or? Um, they tell me she did. Uh -huh. That she actually run the village. Uh -huh. She was the architect of all the buildings and. Well, she wasn't the architect, but she was a... She supervised. Yeah, that's right. Uh-huh. Yeah. Everything had to be just clean and cleaned up. You didn't see it like it is now. Uh-huh. There wasn't no dead limbs in the trees. Everything was taken down. If a tree was needed any doctrine, they had a man here. That's all he did, work on trees. Really? You better not cut a limb either. <laughs> yeah. Well, how how did all the things that they had here, like these, we got the impression, we were reading a lot of the um, letters and things like this up at the library about the farm, and got the impression that they used a lot of modern techniques and things here. Was that your impression? Yeah. Uh -huh. They they would get the latest of everything. Latest of everything. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. And install it. And install it. And that was pretty. That was considered real modern compared to other large farms. That's in the area. right. Of course, that wouldn't that wouldn't be called modern today. But right. back but back, back then, then it was. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. Do you remember? Uh, people coming through and, and touring the farm and looking? No, uh, I don't know, but I understand there was mm -hmm. conventions and things like that. That's why I say it was made for a show place. Mm -hmm. I would see maybe several people, in a, but I wouldn't know what they were doing what at that doing. time. But I imagine that's what they were doing, Return. going over the farm. Uh -huh. Because, as you say, they had the least, the last, best equipment they could show in the hay fields and, and everywhere. Mm -hmm. But then at the same time, the cattle weren't taken very good care of, evidently. Or From the milking point, they weren't. Uh -huh. But now from the other point, they were just as slick and pretty as you ever saw. Uh-huh. Hmm. So they were, they were, sh they looked good in the show, but yeah, couldn't give any milk. That's right, that's right. <laughs> that's well, the, the show was all right for to get ribbons and things like that, but you couldn't eat the ribbons. And the hoarders getting the money from the milk was dropping off all the time. Uh -huh. So they finally just had to sold it up. Uh, what is this process you were talking about that they had to do to the cattle? The what? You were saying that they had to do, I can't remember what you called it, but you had they had to do something to the cattle. After they milked them, uh -huh. strip them. What, what is that? In, what's That's milking? just like milking by hand. You know how you do it by hand. Right. You've got to, what they call stripping, you've got to come back after the milking okay. machine gets through and, and milk them by hand. Mm -hmm. To get the, just the little yeah. bit that was left? That's right. Now, mm -hmm. now you get catching on. <laughs> I see. And they just never took the time to do that? No, they just, just had a gang of boys, or not a gang, but they had a four or five. Uh -huh. And the head dairyman didn't, wasn't paying no attention to them. Uh -huh. And just let the cow drive. Hmm. Hmm. But they still looked good. <laughs> oh yeah, they looked good. Yes, ma'am. That's a, a sort of ironic in a way that they you have these beautiful looking cows that aren't worth anything. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, gosh. Well, let me go back to um, when you went up to work for Dick up in Roaring Gap. You say you um, went up there, commuted for a while from town. What made you decide to want to go up there and move? 
Did you move your family up there too? No. Uh uh. Uh huh. We just went up on Monday morning and came back on Friday afternoon. And you did this for two years? Something like that. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Maybe longer, I see. What did your wife think about that? Well, go up there. we were just coming out of the Depression. She was glad I had right. a job. That's true. That was in 1972. Yeah. Uh -huh. What did people think about him building a big house like that in the middle of the Depression? Well, the general public didn't know much about it. Uh -huh. It was mostly the people up there because he hardly all of them. When they'd sell him, when they'd sell him, hit their farm, they'd go to work for him. Uh -huh. When they was they was in hog heaven, <laughs> they were happy about. Oh it. yeah, uh -huh. because uh, you know that they couldn't give it land away, and he'd buy it. Maybe I heard that he got a lot of five dollars an acre, oh. but you couldn't stand the billy goat up on. <laughs> Really, it was real steep yeah. land. Some of it, uh -huh. some of it, pretty land. Uh huh. So he built this sort of as a vacation home, or did he live there? Oh, they, I think they lived there now. I don't. I'm not sure. After I left them up there, mm -hmm. I'm not sure whether they actually lived up there. Probably was more of a summer home, mm -hmm. but they had employees stayed up there all the time. Did they use any of the um, employees that used to work here at Rinalda House? No, like no, we got all of them from up there. Got them all from there. Mm -hmm. So I guess people here in Winston didn't know too much about that mm -hmm. going no, on up there. No, no. You'd be surprised. People like you have never heard tell of before. Well, I know. And here I am. I'm supposed to know about that. Well, you you should go up there and look at it. Uh -huh. Where is Roaring Gap? How long would it take you to get there? Oh, about an hour. Mm -hmm. It joins. It joins her own gap property. Mm -hmm. But now, then, since Ms. Reynolds died, the boys have got it all split up. I don't know. I don't know who owns the main house and the other buildings up the river. I don't know how they divide it up. Was it as big as this house? The no, house? no, the main house wasn't as big as this house. Mm -hmm. But it was still pretty big. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. and it was made I forget how many bedrooms it had. But it had a water wheel, made the electrics, because at that time they didn't have no electricians running up there. Put in them water wheel and generator. Mm -hmm. So that was some work that you did up there. You helped put in the water mm -hmm. wheel and generator. Yeah. yeah. Uh huh. Uh huh. Did he have anything? What other things did he have up there? Did he have? He didn't have anything, Roan Gale. Uh -huh, just the house. D d d devotion was what all he had up there. Mm -hmm. And that's what they called the estate. Now, Rowan Gap is a, what you might say, a village of summer homes. That's about all is up there. Right. People with money. It's got summer homes up there. It's got a golf course. Uh -huh. But he didn't have anything that I know of it and Rowan Gap itself. Right. Uh -huh. He built this other down there on, separate from Rowan Gap. Uh -huh. Was the house, um, did it have, did he raise crops or anything like that, like at Ronalda? Uh, he didn't, uh -huh. but if, if he bought a farm for somebody, uh -huh. I think he'd let them, if they wanted to, they own and raise a crop. He might get some of it. Mm -hmm. I don't know too much about the, that arrangement. That end. Oh. So how many acres would you say he owned up there? I think it was one time about 14,000, 13,000 or something like Gosh. that. It's, it's that was bigger acreage than Ronaldo had then, I guess. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, Renola only had. When I come here, I was told I had 1,410 acres. He had 14,000? I think that's what they claimed. Ooh, that is he just kept buying. He just kept buying. I, I might be wrong in it, but it's several thousand acres. Mm. Gosh, that's a huge amount of land. And he had it all fenced in. Uh-huh. He fenced it all in? Mm-hmm. He brought deer up there and bear, all kinds of animals and turned loose in there. Why do you think he did that? Why did he? Uh -huh. Just for sport. Uh huh. Would he hunt? And he had a fish hatchery. Hatched fish eggs. And turned them loose up there in the lake. Uh huh. Uh -huh. It's a beautiful place. It was. I don't know. Last time I was up there, it's been three or four years ago. Uh, the road is bad shape. Some of the buildings is in bad shape. Uh -huh. Is anybody living in the main house? I don't know. Since they divided it up, uh -huh. I don't know. I don't know which one of the boys got the main house. Uh -huh. These would be Dick's sons? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What was he like? Well, we haven't read a whole lot about him. What was um, Dick Reynolds like? He was as good as gold when he was sober. Uh -huh. And as mean as snake when he's drinking, <laughs> that's all I can say. <laughs> well, most people, I guess, are like that. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Well, that's neat. Did you, um, so you you said that you had had um, seen Smith, too. I saw Smith not over two or three times. Mm -hmm. Do you ever talk with him? Mm-mm. But you did sort of get to know Dick a little bit. Mm -hmm. You did talk to Dick. Oh, yeah, I talked to Dick, yeah. Uh -huh. What kind of business was he in? Dick? Mm -hmm. The only thing I knew, he was a mayor of Winston-Salem one time. <laughs> so he sort of lived up and in that. He had an investment, I think, in that, some airline, too. Uh -huh. Him and... Uh, Smith, you know, was a airman, airplane, uh -huh. crazy. Uh huh. They used to land a plane up here in this field. Oh, really? Out here? Mm hmm. Gosh. You remember them doing that? Mm hmm. Uh huh. I bet that was something. So, did they keep the, when you first started coming here, I guess that was in 1926. Would they keep um, servants here on the on the place for when people came in? Uh uh. They didn't. Nobody except uh, they had one housekeeper mm -hmm. that would come up here every day. She lived across the road. Mm -hmm. What was her name? Miss Gunn. Mm -hmm. And uh, they had one two. Maybe they had two. Would come in and keep it clean and dusted. Mm -hmm. But didn't anybody, didn't anybody live here right. when I first came out? Right. They would come down at Easter and Christmas mm -hmm. and throw big parties and dances mm -hmm. for a couple of weeks mm -hmm. and be gone. Mm -hmm. Did you ever work at work up at when they had the parties? Oh, yeah. I've come up here like 7 o'clock in the morning and stay up here till the sun come up the next morning over here. Really? What would you do? Stay around and see that everything, see the lights didn't go out. And mm -hmm. any, just anybody didn't come. In other words, just make a general routine inspection. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Did you have anybody over you giving you orders no. then? You just sort of were... Of course, they knew where to find me if they wanted me. Right. I generally stayed down the basement door. Uh-huh. And just sort of... I, I didn't mean on my part unless it, something went wrong. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> what were the parties like? Oh, they was tremendous. Uh-huh. 
Can you describe describe any of them? Well, the only thing I can do, you read this year book on Libby? Yeah. Yeah. That describes a lot of it. <laughs> really? What did you think about that book? I don't know what to think about it. It's, if it's true, it surprised me. Mm -hmm. A lot of things in there surprised me. But if it's true, which I reckon it is, or they wouldn't have published it. Hmm. That sounds like some parties. <laughs> oh. I just didn't think they lived a life like that. Uh -huh. Not from what you recalled? Mm -hmm. Not from what you recalled? Would, would they hire um, extra people to come in and work when they had these parties? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Where would they get those people from? I don't know, but they'd have bartenders and people prepare the food mm -hmm. and have different ones. Mm -hmm. Do you, Did you remember Mr. Miller? Mr. Who? Mr. Harvey Miller. Did you remember him <laughs> from back then? Who wouldn't remember Harvey? <laughs> <laughs> the way Harvey talks, you should never forget him. <laughs> was he working here when you got here? When you came? He was working out on the farm. Water boy, I think, when I came here. Uh-huh. So, did you remember? I don't know whether he. I knew. I know he was carrying water when I moved here, but I don't know whether he was carrying water when I first went to work out here or not. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, evidently his parents were at some point. Yeah, they was here. Mm -hmm. Did you remember John Carter? Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, I knew, I knew them all. Did you, did they ever have any get-togethers for the employees, or did you just... No, they, you mean something special for yeah. the employees? Uh -uh. mm -hmm. So the, the times that you talked to people, it was just when you were working? Yeah. Uh -huh. Did you get to, did you ever socialize with any of the people working on the place, like, you know, church or... Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah it, it, this is just a nice neighborhood. Uh-huh. Visit and uh -huh. tell your troubles. Uh-huh. Did you have some close friends that were, you know, worked, lived and worked on the place, too? Well, you mean that lived on the place? Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. who, who were these? Who were well, uh, Mr. Connor and... and uh, Mr. Mahoney, he was a plumber, mm -hmm. and uh, the, Mr. Sigmund, he was a night watchman, mm -hmm. and Mr. Fulcher was a night watchman. Mm -hmm. We had two night watchmen here for a long time, and uh, Mr. Warfield, he was the head of the dairy, mm -hmm. and we just, just a good neighbor. What kind of community activities would you do, work in, or do together? Did you ever do things here? Well, uh, they used to have a ball team here. Oh, uh, really? Yeah, that was before Ms. Rums died there. That was uh -huh. before I came here. Uh-huh. But uh, they had a ball team. And we done a lot of fishing down here in the lake. But it was, it was more of a private back then. I went to work one Easter Friday out here on this gate where you come in by the greenhouse. Uh -huh. Had all the other gates chains up on them locked. Uh -huh. I went to work out there on Easter Friday 
I worked out there every weekend on that gate. Nobody came in here with a car except people lived over there, unless you was coming in to visit them. Till the first week in October when I carried take my vacation. I've seen the cars at Easter time from the creek down here up above the stone gate up here, parked on in Renola Road, and people would walk in that gate down there. You, you let them walk in, mm-hmm. but no driving in, mm-hmm. to go up and see the garden. Mm. So the public would never come except for special times like yeah. the Easter. Once in a while, maybe a tourist would try to get in, but he didn't get in. Uh-huh. <coughs> so it really was sort of a community into itself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Did, what church did you go to in town? I went across the road over here for a good bit. Uh-huh. Renault Church? Mm-hmm. Then I'm a Baptist, uh-huh. and we started a little church, mission church up here on Ransom Road, uh-huh. Polo and Ransom. And I moved my membership up there, uh-huh. and uh, we've been going up there ever since. Uh-huh. What's the difference between the Renova Church and the Baptist Church that you moved to? What what were some of the differences between the two churches? Well, I didn't see much difference. Not much difference? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's just that you'd always been raised traditionally bad. That's right. Just like Democrat and Republican. <laughs> just whatever you was raised at, you won't have to be that. Uh-huh. uh-huh. But the reason I went over there was uh, back then the gas was shortage, too. Of course, it wasn't as high as nothing like it is now, but there was a shortage of gas. You had to have a coupon to get gas. Mm-hmm. It was ration. That's the reason I went to Renola Church. Mm-hmm. Was your wife also a Baptist? Mm-hmm. Was your wife also a Baptist? Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. My first wife was. Uh-huh. My second wife was a Moravian. But she joined the Baptist Church. Uh-huh. I didn't ask her to. But she did. Uh-huh. Did the um, Babcocks um, attend church? Very seldom. Uh-huh. Unless it's a special occasion. Uh-huh. Which church would they go to if they went to one? Most of the sitting there. Where's, where's that at? Downtown. Uh huh. What kind of church was that? Sitting there, Methodist. Methodist. Uh-huh. I wonder why they didn't go across the road. I don't know. We're not. Was this road right across the road? They didn't go in it. They didn't go in any place off. <laughs> I don't think now. I don't think so. Uh huh. Did the Babcocks throw a lot of parties too when they were living here? Right, many. Mm-hmm. Right, many. Would you come up to up to the house and stay up here yeah. during those times? Yeah. Uh-huh. Would they pay you extra for coming up? No. I was just part I of the Never job. did. Except for Christmas. Uh huh. But uh, when they were going to have a big party or a dance or something, it was t- t- up to me to get boys to park cars. They'd drive down here at the front door, and you'd give them a, half of a ticket. Mm-hmm. And them boys would take the cars back up the road here, because this is the meanest place in town for a big party to park cars. You know where to park them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I ready had to put it loudspeakers ready and uh, call them from 
way up yonder at the upper gate. I've had this year field out here full of cars. Oh, really? Yeah. Gosh, that many people. You couldn't walk for them inside the house. Can't even imagine that many people being in this house. It's such a big house. Well, it, it was in here. Uh-huh. You can put a lot of people on the basement in the first floor. Uh-huh. I bet, yeah. I've forgotten that they had renovated that part. Yeah. So you really did have two floors. Well, how did the Babcocks pay you? Were you paid a monthly wage? By the monthly. Uh-huh. And so that just covered any any time extra time that you spent yeah mm -hmm. was it? I didn't get anything for extra work right uh -huh. did you have to do a lot of extra work above your not too much mm -hmm. uh, occasions like that's about the only time I had to work overtime you might say course if I was off a day or two days I got my money just the same too mm -hmm. was it easy to get off how would oh, you go yeah, about oh yeah just whenever I otherwise I didn't have to punch no clock uh -huh. whenever I wa wanted to be off I generally let them know uh, not Babcock especially but uh, the house help here I generally let them know when I was going to be off in case something happened, you know, mm -hmm. where they could get hold of me or get hold of somebody that I'd... So it sounds like you had pretty much freedom on your job. Oh, I did. Yeah, there's nobody... Like I say, only trouble I ever had with my job was when Mr. Sepp put those orders out that I had to get... Everything had to come through his office. Uh -huh. Before I did anything, uh -huh. that's the only trouble I ever had. Uh -huh. And this is when this is after you had moved here and started yeah. working for the Babcock. Yeah. So they weren't really paying any of your salary at all. The the Ronaldo uh, Corporation. Mm -hmm. And That's who Mr. I Sapp guess so. Was. I don't know where it's coming from. <laughs> did Mr. Sapp work for the Ronaldo Corporation? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it. Charlie Babcock wanted to fire him. Could he do it? Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, Charlie Babcock would fire anybody who wanted to do it. <laughs> I'm trying to understand the relation between Ronaldo House and Ronaldo Corporation. Well, now, I don't know myself uh -huh. what that was up until they closed out Ronaldo Incorporated. Mm -hmm. Then I do know from then on it was up to Mr. Babcock. But they closed it out simply because it was losing so much money. Yeah, that is my understanding. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Well, I can you think of something you would like to add? No, I don't think of anything. Else. Remember any stories about Mr. Babcock? Uh huh? <laughs> you have any good stories about Mr. Babcock? <laughs> no. We lived up here. You see, I had my, I had a heart attack, 1960. We was living up here at that time, back on the far end of the house in that apartment. Mm -hmm. Up here? Mm-hmm. Oh. And uh, when I moved here, to begin with, I moved across the road. And then 1936, they remodeled this house where the foundation is now. You know where that's at? Down here yeah, on the corner? Yeah, the Mary Babcock Foundation. Yeah. Uh -huh. I moved in there uh -huh. and lived there till my wife died. Uh -huh. And all my children were gone. And I moved up in the barn where the dead boys used uh -oh, to stay. Really? Uh -huh. They had an apartment up there. They had three bedrooms for the boys that looked at it because they had to get up early in the morning. I moved up there. Then uh, they asked me to come up here to live in this apartment. And we lived back there 
I don't know. I reckon six, seven years. Was this the Babcocks that asked you to come up? Mm-hmm. They weren't living here then? Yeah, they, they were, were living, living here. here too? Yeah. Oh. But uh, I closed up at night mm -hmm. after everybody was in. Mm -hmm. I closed up at night. And then they built a new home up here, you know. Yeah. And Better when they moved up there, that left nobody here but my wife and myself. Mm -hmm. And we we lived back there. We stayed back there till they opened up the house to the public. What year was that? You know, you got I don't that. Know. Well, whatever it was. Mm -hmm. Then I moved down where I'm at now. What was it like living in the house with the Babcock family? Oh, it was just like a family. Uh-huh. If he wanted anything, he'd come back and tell me. Mm -hmm. And uh, when he'd come in at night, if they was out and they'd come in at night, he'd just push a bell button in his bedroom, mm -hmm. and I'd come out and lock the doors and turn off the lights. And uh -huh. Did Did... They treat your rooms like it was your own little house, or did you have the servants? Would the servants come in and and do the same kinds of things that they did no, in the other we, rooms? We we done the maid work, work uh -huh. my wife did, in our apartment. Uh -huh. But we didn't do any cooking. Uh -huh. We eat the same thing they did, uh -huh. except we they bring it up back there uh -huh. in a sunroom. The now that's one thing about the Babcock. Mm -hmm. Now they tell me that Hanges and the others don't do that. But they help, Babcocks help, eat the same thing they did mm -hmm. seven days a week. Mm -hmm. That's something you can't say about all the rich people, you know what I mean? Yeah. Now they tell me some of them, if they got mutton or ham or chicken uh -huh. they help get the onion sandwich no I don't know how true that is but I know that's not the truth here uh -huh. because all the help here ever since I've been here eat the same thing that the Mr. and Ms. Babcock eat uh -huh. they were good on their help Of course, after, after they moved it out of here up to their new home, the, the cook didn't stay here. She went with them up there. Right. And we had to do our own cooking then. Uh -huh. Was there anybody here that helped take care of the house besides y'all after the Babcocks left? Yeah, Harvey and Harvey. Rosalie. In other words, they'd come out here every day and keep the house clean. Uh -huh. But they'd go home about five o'clock, and it was up to my wife and myself, of course. Now, we didn't have to stay here all the time. All we had to do was let them know if we wasn't going to be here tonight, because we wasn't going to be here tomorrow. Mm -hmm. <coughs> mm. Well, that's, that's interesting. I didn't know you had lived up here with the family. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah we lived up here. Uh -huh. My wife didn't like it. She didn't like it. Why not? Well, you take this old house and when, at night when everything's quiet, mm -hmm. especially in the winter time when the steam's on. Mm -hmm. You know how steam pipe will knock sometimes. Yeah. She'd hear it back there. It sounds just like somebody breaking the window out yeah. back here. Mm -hmm. But I got used to it. I didn't pay no attention to it. Uh -huh. I knew what it was, uh -huh. but I couldn't convince her is it. She thought it was somebody's breaking in. Uh -huh. Would you have rather have had your own house, or did the Babcocks ask you to move up into the um, apartment up here? No, they asked me to move up here. Uh huh. Yeah, they asked me. They had a a man here, John Carter's brother, George, mm -hmm. and. Uh, he went to Florida on a vacation and died. Mm -hmm. 
And he was living up here? No, no. he wasn't living up here. Mm -hmm. He was staying up here at night. That's when Babcock asked us to move up here and look after the house for them. when they were in California or wherever they were at. Mm -hmm. In other words, to make this our home. Mm -hmm. And uh, close up at night for them. See that everything is closed up. Mm -hmm. And if they are going to be out late, I'd close up everything except the front door. Okay. And then all he had, he had a key, all he had to do was come in the front door and slam it and it'd be locked again. Mm -hmm. But if he'd come in, say, eight or nine o'clock, he would uh, push a button bell ring back there. And mm -hmm. I could close up then if I wanted to. So did you pretty much agree with him that that would be okay what? to move up here? Well, it was with me, yeah. Uh -huh. You she, didn't she, care? She didn't much like it. Uh -huh. Do you think she felt a little uncomfortable living with this rich family? Yeah. Did she? Well, she didn't like it. Uh-huh. Well. Yeah. Yeah. So when when we had to move down yonder where we at, uh -huh. there's a big step down from this big house to a three room house, but that says suited her. <laughs> oh, I can I, I can see why. She said she never wanted a big house. Oh, I can see why. Yeah. A lot of our friends back a few years ago built a new house, you know. And great big long brick house, you know, maybe three bedrooms and just two of them. Uh -huh. And she could never understand how in the world they wanted a big house like that. <laughs> oh, gosh. Well, did your, was, was it considered like pretty prestigious to work out here on Ronaldo Farms? Was this I, a, considered I a good job? I never did. A lot of people would think you get the big head, you know. Uh -huh. But it never did make no difference with me. Because uh -huh. after all, they're just humans like we are. But they never did. You know, if you didn't know them and see them out in public, you'd never dream of them. That it, that's who they were. They had a lot of money. Did you ever know them? No, I never did. My first wife often told me that the employees down here d dressed their children better than Ms. Babcock did. Really? Not, to, but not because she didn't have the money to do it, uh -huh. or not because they had it as put to wear if they wanted to wear it, uh -huh. but they go very just very common. Mm -hmm. You never think it did had what they had by looking at the soul. Now what I mean by that, some people, you know, will go hungry to put all what money they got in a in soul. Uh -huh. I know people do that. Yeah. But that never did bother me, clothes. Uh huh. The saying is clothes makes a man, I don't think so. So they were, they tried not to put on airs of being right. rich. That's right. Uh -huh. Were the, what were the Babcocks like? Were they, were they, did they try to be friends or were they employers or? Yeah, yeah, they were friendly to the employers. They all, they would always speak to you if they met you out on, mm -hmm. on the, in the village somewhere, uh, yeah, even in a store downtown, they saw you. They'd speak to you. Mm -hmm. They're very friendly. Mm -hmm. Could you take like personal problems to them and talk and talk things like that, or was it friendship not no, quite that I, far? No, I, I never did. Uh huh. But they were they were just friendly. It was, they weren't didn't try to impress upon you that you were an employee. Mm -hmm. No. Mm -hmm. 
That's neat. Were the children here, um, any of the Babcock's children here, when mm -hmm. you were living up here? Mm -hmm. well, yeah, Charles was here. Uh-huh. He, he was living here at the time. Uh-huh. Part-time. Uh-huh. You know, that he was in and out. Was he in school then or something? Was, mm -hmm. was he in school then, the reason he was in and out? Well, what do you mean? Was Charles, was he living here full time or was he going to college? No, he was living here. He was living here full time. You just didn't see him a whole lot. Yeah, uh -huh. in other words, he'd, he'd go off and stay maybe, maybe a week at a time. Well, I don't have any more questions. Um, well, I don't know of anything else to add, do <laughs> I think you told everything. Um, I may think of something later and, uh, or, or some um, more things I'd like to ask, and I'll just look you up. Okay. Yeah, okay. But I appreciate it. And if you can um, 